This is the Volca sample, a sample machine slash groove box made by Korg. It can hold 99 samples that you can then shape differently with the knobs in the center, and you can then program these in sequence with the pad section that you have at the bottom. You can record up to 10 different sequences, each with different sounds and each with different settings and automations. In this review slash tutorial, I will try to explain everything you can do with it and how to do it so you can build your own opinion on it, and then I will talk about what I think about it, talking about the pros and the cons. There is a lot to be said, so as always with this long video, you can find the timings for each part in the description so you can jump directly to the part you're looking for. Let's begin. Before we begin this review, I would like to say something for the people who'd like to buy a pre-owned one like I did. When you try it to see if it works well, keep the record button pressed when you turn it on. It will boot up in a mode where you can see the version of the firmware, which is the internal program. You want it to be on the 1.3 version. It is an update that came in 2015, so I assume if you buy a new one it should be updated already, but when I had mine it was on version 1.22, and this version had a bug related to the creation of melodies. One of the features to make melodies was simply not working. Of course you can update the firmware, but to do so was kind of a struggle for me, and according to the forums I read, it was also a struggle for other people too. Basically, you update it by playing an audio file through this sync in input. Thing is, I tried to play the audio file with my computer, with my phone, with three different on cables and nothing worked. It only worked by using my sound card, only at full volume and only with the cable which was sold with the Volca. So long story short, you can avoid the struggle by making sure it is already on version 1.3 when you get it. So now that we got that out of the way, what is it? So this is a small groove box that has small speakers built in and that runs with six batteries. Though you can get an external cable to power it that is sold separately. The one I'm using is a generic one that I got off Amazon for 10 quid a while ago. The output is a mini jack cable and you can also use a mini jack to sync it to other machines with this sync input and output. Or you can also use a MIDI cable to control it and synchronize it. Then the part in the middle with all the knobs is the part where you are going to load and modify your samples. The part at the bottom with the pads is where you can select on which track you are working and where you can manage your sequences. And on the left you have a small EQ with a bass knob and a treble knob, which is cool for live performance. So when you turn on the Volca sample, it should already have a pack loaded. Each pack is made of 10 different samples and you can hear the samples by tapping the pads from 1 to 10. You can see a part as either one sample or one track in your sound. Every time you play a part, it becomes selected. The LED at the bottom will show which part is selected. The parts 9 and 10 are linked because they are part of a choke group, which means they interrupt each other. When one plays, it shuts down the other one. It should also have a sequence loaded already, so you can press the play button to hear it. By the way, the samples I'm using here are not the original samples, I have replaced all the sounds for drum sounds because I'm using it more like a drum machine, but I'll show you later in this video how you can import your own sounds in it as well. Next to the play button you have a tempo knob to set the speed of the loop and a swing knob to give the loop more swing. and you have the function button that you are going to use a lot. The function button allows you to accept the secondary functions of all the pads and all the knobs. You can see the secondary functions written in little under each pad and each button there. So let's see how to make our own sequence to see how it works. First, we need to delete this one. Under the pads 14 to 16, you can see a section called clear. You can clear the active step, which we're gonna talk about a bit later. You can clear the sequence for one part, or you can clear the sequence for all the parts, so that's what we need. So that's function with pad 16 and now the sequence is completely empty. So now the sequence is empty, we can start filling a new one, and there are several ways to do that. Let's use the step record first, as we can have most of the job done with it. To enter step record mode, press the function button with the record button. Then the Volca enters a state where it's waiting for the sound to play on the first step, so let's put a kick there. Then it's waiting for the sound to play on the second step of the sequence, so you can input each step one by one to build your sequence like that. And you can also input several sounds at once for one step. And if you want to insert a silence, you can press the record button, which will erase the current step and move to the next one. Then you can go back and forth to the previous and next steps with these left and right arrows, which makes it very handy to edit a sequence. And once you're done, you can just press the function button to leave this step record mode. 
A second way you can edit your loops is with the step mode, which is the button right here. It allows you to see and edit the sequence for each part one by one. So for example, if the kick is selected, it will show the sequence for the kick. So we can see the kicks hits on each of those spots. So from there, it's really easy to edit where you want to put the kick in the sequence. And while you are in step mode, you can hot swap between different tracks by holding the function button and then touching the pad you want to select. So if we want to modify the snare, I hold the function button and select the second pad, because that's where my snare is. Then a third way to edit a sequence is by recording it live, while the sequence is playing. So you just press the record button, and when the record button is flashing, everything you play will be added to the sequence. So for now we have a drum loop, and we can also do melodies, but we'll keep that for a little bit later because I would like to introduce this middle section first. This is where you can select which sample to use and then modify it. So first let's select the part on which we want to work, let's say we want to work with the snare. If you want to select a part without playing the sound, you can by holding the function button at the same time. See the LED tells us which part is selected. So let's select this one. You can select the sample that will be used with this sample knob. There is up to 99 samples you can choose from and the number of the sample you have selected appears on the display there. You can change the samples that are in the Volca, but we'll see that at the end of the video as we need to go back to the computer for that. So say we want this sample. You can then tweak which part of the sample will be used with the start point and length knobs. So you can skip the beginning of the sample or you can cut the end like this. Next to that you have the high cut knob, which is a low pass filter that you can close to make the sound a bit darker or a bit more muffled. Then the second row of knobs is dedicated to the pitch. The first knob will change the speed of the sample playback, so the faster it is played the higher the pitch, but also the shorter the sample. And next to that you have the pitch envelope, which can make the pitch of the sample go downward or upward while it's playing. You can set the intensity of the pitch envelope with the EG int knob, which stands for Envelope Generator Intensity. Here the zero is actually in the middle if you don't want any pitch modulation, and then it can go toward negative or positive values. Then the attack knob sets the length of the original rise or fall of the pitch, and the decay sets how long it takes to go back to the original pitch. So if I set the intensity to a positive value, it means that my sample will be played at its original pitch set by the speed button, then the pitch will go up with the time set with the attack button, and then it will go back down during the time set by the decay button. For example, if you're making an electronic drum and you feel it doesn't have enough bytes, you can try using the pitch envelope to build a stronger transient. Let's set the intensity high in the positive values, set the attack to the minimum, and set a short decay time. This way the pitch will go very quickly from a high pitch to the normal pitch, and that should build a stronger attack. Then the last row of knobs is dedicated to the amplitude of the sample, so it's everything to control its volume. You can set the level of the sample to say how loud you want it to be played, and then you can set its panoramic to place it more on the left or more on the right. And then you have a small envelope generator on which you have the control over the attack and the decay. It works in a similar way than the previous envelope, except this one will control the volume of the sample instead of its pitch. So you can make a sample fade in more or less rapidly by setting a longer or shorter attack, and you can make it disappear more or less gradually with the decay knob. Keep in mind that the sample have its own length, so if the envelope cycle is longer than the sample, the sample will just stop playing when it's played the whole thing. And all these knobs will affect only the sample from the part you have selected, so you can craft each sample individually. So you can set them at different levels or different pitches and place them differently from left to right to have a nice stereo loop. But there's more you can do to modify the sample further. You can play a sample in reverse, for example. To do that, you hold the function button and the reverse button, and then you select which part you want to reverse. When the sample is reversed, the attack knob serves at the end point of the loop, and the length knob can be used to set where the sample starts, so it becomes reversed as well. And there is also a loop function that is useful to make your sample longer. Your selected sample can be looped by holding the function button and pressing the pad 11 that says S1 loop on off. It will play in loop the part of your sample that is set by the start point and the length knobs, so you can create new textures with it. And then the pitch envelope and the amplitude envelopes can shape the overall sound.
You can also use the loop function to make hi-hat rolls, for example. You can set the length of the loop so it will sound on the beat, and so you can play smaller time division that the sequencer allows. Or you can use it to create some kind of delay effect. One thing that I love about the Volcars are their ability to do automations, and this one has it as well. It allows you to record movements on some of these knobs, so the motion of these parameters becomes part of your sequence. You can make automations on all the transparent knobs on this machine, and there are two ways you can record them. But first, you need to activate the automations for the part you have selected. To do that, you hold the function button and hit the path 12 that says motion on off. When it's lit, it's on. One way to record automation is to record them while the loop is playing. To do that, you press the record button and then the Volca will wait for the first parameter to change. As soon as you start turning the knob, the Volca will start recording an automation for that. It will record for one loop up until it comes back to where you started turning the knob, and then it will stop recording automatically. Another way you can write automations is to set the values step by step. It is this function that was not working on the version 1.22 of the firmware. When you are in step mode, so this button is flashing, you can hold the pad down and then change the value of a knob. This will lock the value for that knob on that particular step. So for example, we can lock the decay time of the open hi-hats on some step. So let's select the open hi-hats, let's make sure the motion is on for this part, and then enter step mode, and you hold the pad, let's make a shorter decay time for this one, and a longer for this one. And then you can still control the decay on the other steps because these are not locked. So it can be a good way to add accents using the decay knob or automate the, the level on the part to use it like a velocity control. It is also this function that allows you to make melodies. So to write a melody, you select the part that will play it, you enter step mode, here you can place the notes on every step, if you want to. There you need to activate the motion for that part, and then set the speed on different values for each step by holding each step and turning the speed knob. While you turn the speed knob, you can hold the function button, it will transpose your sample semitone by semitone, which is very useful to write melodies. Just don't hold the function button before you hit a pad, because that is the shortcut to select another part. And then you can still use the step mode to activate and deactivate some steps to find some cool variations. Every track on the Volca sample has its own automation, so you can activate and deactivate them at any time. If you hold the function button and hit the pad 12, it will activate or deactivate the automations for the selected track only. And if you want to completely erase the automations for a part, you can do that by pressing the function button and the pad 13. For every clear function on the Volca, if you hit them by mistake, you can actually undo them by hitting them again. And I know that can be very handy to know. So as we have kind of a full loop going on, we can start playing with it with some effects, like some performance effects. First you have a reverb that you can turn on or off on individual tracks. Then for the tracks where you have reverb on, you can set its intensity with this knob that says reverb mix. To turn on the reverb on some tracks, you hold the function button and the reverb button, and then you tap on the path that you want to be affected by the reverb. You also have some kind of a 3-band EQ there. With this knob you can lower or boost the basses, and with the other knob you can lower or boost the trebles. This will affect the overall sound that comes out of the Volca, so it can be cool to create some build-up or some drops. On the sequencer side you can also play with the active step mode, which is on the play button. So it's function button plus the play button to activate it. 
There in this mode, each pad represents a step of the whole loop that is playing, and every step you deactivate will be skipped, so it will make the actual loop shorter. This is a parameter that will affect all the parts at the same time, so you can't do polyrhythm with the different parts. But when you are jamming, you can have several steps activated, and then activate and deactivate them to create variations. And if you are jamming and you want to reactivate all the steps at once, you can use the clear active step function on pad 14, so that function and pad 14. Still on the sequencer side, you can also use the step jump function, which is on the step mode button. So that's function plus step jump. There, every pad still represents a step of the general sequence, and when you touch one, it will just play it in loop. Then the loop will continue to play from the last pad you touched. And for jamming purpose, I would have kind of preferred if the loop will just uh, continue playing from where it was, because I find it difficult to have it land on the beat every time. So maybe you'll just need to get the hang of it, but I found it a little bit fiddly. And finally, to play with your different tracks, you can also mute and solo them. To mute them, you hold the mute button so you can select which track is active, and to solo a track, you can hold the function with mute and then select which track you want to solo. Now that our loop and kit are done, it is time to save them. To save your sequence, you hold the function button and press the memory button. You can save up to 10 different loops on the 10 slots represented on the pad 1 to 10, where it says M1, N2, for memory 1, memory 2, etc. So when you press function plus right, hit a pad to save your sequence in that slot. When you save a loop, it will save the sequence, the parameters for each sample, with their automations, active steps, etc. And once it's saved, of course you can load it back by pressing the memory button and selecting the slot you want to load. The pads 11 to 16 are marked from S1 to S6, this is for the song mode. And to enter the song mode, you need to load a song, so that's memory with one of those pads. When you are in song mode, each pad represents a sequence, and the keyboard represents a chain of sequences, so you can chain different sequences together. You can choose which sequence is played on each step by holding the pad down and turning the sample knob. In this mode, almost all the knobs are locked and you can't really use them. You can't really modify the sequences in themselves, but you can use the big filters on the left, the reverb amount and a couple of other things. With the active step, you can activate and deactivate some loops to have shorter or longer chains, so we can deactivate the last one, for example, to have only the three first sequence playing in loop. So because of this mode, it can be a good idea to save your pattern on several slots, so you can make variations and chain them later. From the step jump mode, you can relaunch the chain from any loop you want, and I actually find the step jump way easier to use in this mode. So you can still build an interesting mix with the effects and the step functions, but it's mostly the options to play sequences in the order you want that is really interesting here. You can then save this chain as a song on one of those last six pads, and if you want to go back to the sequence editing mode, you can load a sequence from the pad 1 to 10. Now that we've seen all the functions of the Volca sample, which is a lot already, the question is how do you actually load your own samples in the Volca sample? Well, to do this, you'll need to use a free program on your computer that's called Vozier. I will put a link in the description for that. When you open the program, it shows you this screen, where you can load different samples onto different slots. You just drag the files from a folder on your computer and drop them in the slots. The Volca sample can hold a total of 4MB of files or 65 seconds of samples, so that's not so much and you can keep track of the size of your collection here. Then, to load them in the Volca, you need to connect a mini jack cable between the sync in of the Volca and the audio output of your computer. Then you can select which sample you want to transfer by ticking these boxes, and then click here to transfer them to the Volca. The samples in the corresponding slot numbers will be replaced. I actually had kind of the same struggle to load new samples into the Volca than to update the firmware, so I guess you need to find the right combination of cable and volume to get that to work with your equipment. And when you are happy with the set of samples you have, you can save the whole collection on your computer to reload it later. To save a collection, you can go in files and then save back. There is also another tab in the program that allows you to create sequences directly in the box, so you can save and transfer sequences as well. 
And just before wrapping up this complete overview, I would like to give you just one last tip. With this tip, you could basically turn this sampler into a synthesizer, and that can help you to save some space on the Volca to hold more samples. We've seen that we could load a sample in a part and then play that sample in loop to make it a longer sound. So we could load a sample that is a simple waveform, like a sine wave, so when it's loop, it will make a continuous note. The sampler will then play a sine wave, just like an oscillator. So to do that, we need to cut a waveform precisely at the beginning and the end of a cycle, so it will loop smoothly. And we can cut only one cycle to make the sample file as light as possible. It involves a little bit of math, but it can be very handy. When you are in your door to prepare your samples, load in an instrument that can provide a sine wave or any waveform that you want to sample. I'll use Ableton operators, but any other will do. Then write a note and record it on an audio track, or bounce that track to audio. I will put an A4 for the example. Now the goal is to cut the sample precisely between two cycles of the wave. The easiest way to do that is to synchronize the tempo of your project with the frequency of the notes. You can look up on Google the frequencies of each note, but an A is handy because the frequency is a whole number. I've put an A4, so its frequency is 440 Hz. So that means it oscillates 440 times per second. We know there is 60 seconds in a minute, so if you multiply the frequency by 60, you'll know how many times the waves oscillate in a minute. That's 26,400 oscillations in a minute for our A. Basically, it means that at a tempo of 26,400 BPM, one oscillation is exactly one quarter note. So of course, this tempo is way too high and we can't use it, so we'll have to divide that by two multiple times to find a tempo we can use. So you divide it by two, then again and again and again, and we finally arrive at 206.25 BPM. At that BPM, every vertical line on your door, every beat, every 16th note, every 64th note should be exactly between two cycles of the wave, so you can cut anywhere, in fact. Let's put it in a sampler to see how it would sound like. And there you know that your sample is an A, so you have that as reference to build your melody. And this is the sample that you can load into your Volca sample, or any sampler really. For the comparison, hear the difference if we would have cut that at another tempo, let's say 180 BPM. Here it's way harsher because the waveform has been cut halfway. So when you cut that sample to load it in your sampler, you can try to cut the smallest chunk possible to have the tiniest sample file for the same result. It will leave more storage space for the other samples. The cool thing about this technique is that you can sample any waveform as long as you know what note it plays. So you can make a lot of different synth sounds. So now has come the time to draw the conclusion. What do you think about it? What are the pros and what are the cons? Before we do that, let me know in the comment section what do you think about the Volca sample? Did you use it or would you like to use it? Do you think it was the price? What do you think? It is a very versatile machine. You can do the drums, the bass, the melodies, the pads, uh, some texture sounds. You can do a lot of things. As it has 10 tracks to play with, I think it's really nice. It lets enough room to mute and bring back some tracks to make interesting variations. And I love the step mode. In this mode, you can do a lot of things at the same time. You can program different patterns for the part you're working on while changing its tone. You can record new automations from there. And you can change the track you're working on with these arrows. Or directly select the track you want with the function button and with the pads. And you still have direct access access to the filters and the reverb. I like how you have quick access to everything. For the sound, it will depend a lot on the original material you put in, but you have plenty of options to transform them. Separated envelope for the pitch and amplitude, you can pitch them, loop, filter. I like how you can really transform the sound into something else directly on the Volca. I prefer the sequence mode, but the song mode is a nice addition. I particularly like the fact that we are able to choose in which order the sequences are played, and that we can repeat some several times. That is something I wished I had on other Volcas, for example, and there it is. It's also super transportable given its size, and the price is also a very good point. So it can be a great option if you're looking for a first hardware sampler groove box. I found the step function a little fiddly. You can do cool things with it, but I found it too difficult to make the loop land on the right bit every time, so I don't know if I would rely on it to play live, for example. When you write the first note of a melody and you need to hold the pad down with the function button while turning the speed knob, you have to find a good position for your hand because these three things can be a bit far away from each other. I found it a little bit funny in the beginning, but it might become a problem for small hands. The machine can hold 99 samples, that is a really good amount, so you don't have to replace them that often, but it can hold a maximum of 4 megabytes of samples, and I feel like it's not plenty of space. So you have to keep an eye on that if you replace some samples. You can save up to 6 samples 
songs, but these songs use the same 10 loops. When I explored it, I kind of wished it would be 10 loops per song, because as is, you kind of need to reuse loops. But to be honest, I have no idea how complicated it would be to implement that. I just feel like having more sequences and less songs would be more useful for the use I have of the machine. So all in all, I think for the price, it's a really great value. I like the fact that it is really portable, and I think the versatility with this one is huge. Because I'm using it as a drum machine at the moment, but it can be a lot more things. You can load it different samples and use it for totally other things. So I hope this review slash tutorial has been useful. Tell me in the comments what you think of the machine or if I missed anything. If you have any question, I will check that as well. In the meantime, hit the like button, subscribe, but most of all, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next time.